Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 1.2, Exploring Absolute Values. Okay, so let's start with some key ideas. f of x equals absolute value x is the absolute value function. You may remember it from grade 11. On a number line, the function describes the distance f of x of any number x from the origin. So, in other words, the absolute value is the distance from zero, the magnitude of the vector. You can think about it as the number part of the number, and it does operate like brackets. So if I start with, let's say, the absolute value of negative three, it's just the number part of that number, so it's the three, that's how far it is from zero. But it's the same with positive three, the absolute value of positive three is also three, because that's three away from zero. Um, let's say we're doing something like absolute value of four minus six, this is also, well, we're going to use this like bracket, so we're going to do the inside first. So 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and then we can do the absolute value. It's 2 away from 0, so the answer is 2. The graph looks like a, a two pieces of graphs that you may be familiar with. Well, hopefully you are familiar with if you are in advanced functions. Um, we have the y equals x on this side and the y equals x on this other side. Uh, we can describe it as a piecewise function, which we're going to learn about in 1.5, but uh, this is the absolute va value function. It looks like a v and has slopes of 1 and negative 1. Alright, so now that we've talked about evaluating and graphing it, let's talk about solving for x if we're inside of the absolute value function. Um, so absolute value x equals 4, if you remember, we just looked at negative 3 and 3 having the same absolute value, um, and so when you think about anything inside of this absolute value, you should know that you want to try to solve for it by thinking first about the positive version of that, so the positive version of x is x, and also the negative version, so either of these is correct, negative x equals 4 like this x equals 4 is one solution, and if we isolate the x on this side, we can see that x equals negative 4 is another solution. And often in questions, they'll ask you to graph that on the number line, so we've got a number line here, and we'll just draw those dots in there like that. That's the answer. Okay, so let's say we want to use it with an inequality instead. So now we've got x minus 4 on the inside and less than 5. Don't worry about the inequality right now. We still want to do the positive version and just copy the question exactly the same way and the negative version of that. When we solve for an inequality, we're going to treat it like an equal sign if we have adding and subtracting, but if we have a division or multiplication by negative 1, then we'll have to do something a little bit different. So for this one, I can just leave the inequality the way it is and move this 4 over. It's a negative 4, so we'll add it to the other side. It becomes 9, x less than 9. This one, we can do this in two ways. I'm going to get rid of the negative first. We could use the distributive property, and I'll show that you that afterwards. But right now, I'm just going to divide everything by negative 1. So this becomes x minus 4. When we divide by negative 1, what we want to do is flip the sign. So this flips, and we get negative 5 over here. And then we can just solve it regularly. So x, this negative 4, becomes a positive 4 on the other side because we're subtracting. So we'll add it to the other side, just like an equation and we've got negative 1. So now, when I graph this on my number line, I'm going to have x is less than 9, so I'll just circle the 9 here, and you always want to have a little bit more on your number line than you need, so I don't want to stop my number line right at the 9. Uh, I need to extend it a little bit extra. I pre-made these number lines, but when you make your own number line, you can just go to the negative 2, um, and all the way up to the 10, because that's all we really need and we circle the negative 1. This is because we don't have the equals, right? We only want to have um, approaching negative 1, not quite touching it. And you can see that f we're greater than negative 1, so we're going in this direction, and we're going less than 9 in this direction, so they're actually going to meet in the middle, and our solution is just between negative 1 and 9. So we should write our solution as negative 1 is less than x is less than 9. Okay, last example here. So we're going to treat it in the same way again. Do the positive version and the negative version. Do the algebra in the same way. So x greater than or equal to 9, that's the same. 
This time I'm going to use distributive property. If you like to do it the other way, you can. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Negative x plus 4. I'm just multiplying both of them by negative 1. And then I'll move that 4 over. And then I'll divide by the negative 1. Because I'm dividing by negative 1, I'm going to flip that sign. So it looks like this. x is less than or equal to negative 1. Okay, so because I've got this equals, I'm going to have a closed dot on the negative 1. And up here I have an equals as well, so I'm going to have a closed dot on the 9. And you can see it's going above 9, so it's going in this direction. And below negative 1, so it goes in this direction. And we actually have two intervals where the answer is true. Okay. So that was showing things written absolute value notation. I also want to talk about interval notation and set notation. We'll talk about set notation first because you're probably fairly familiar with it. Set notation looks like this. It's got this curly bracket. I do expect you to try to do a curly bracket. Don't just do a random zigzaggy thing. It's not. <laughs> you could at least try to do it like with three of them because then it looks more like a curly bracket. Um, so we've got this curly bracket x in, so it's a C with a line through it, a lot of people call it an E, in the set of real numbers. This is an R, a fancy R. Uh, when you draw it, you don't have to draw a super fancy R, I usually draw a double bar R. So it looks like this, that means a set of real numbers. So again, I'm just drawing two times and then drawing the R around it and then finishing off the bottom. So this means the set of real numbers just lets people know that it is a set. And this line means such that. So x is in R such that 3 is less than x is less than 5. So we're not including the 3 and 5, but we're including numbers like 3.1, 3.01, um, you know, 4.99999 or whatever. So if I drew that on the number line, it would look like this with an open circle and then filling in the middle, right? So that's why we say it's in the real numbers because we're not just saying, okay, the answer is 4. We're saying it's 3.1, 3.2, 3.9, whatever. So the closed interval is inclusive, so it's the same thing, curly bracket x in r, x in the reals, such that 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. So now we're including the two numbers, 3 and 5. So everything that we just had in the last two, or in the, sorry, in the last example, but with 3 and 5 included. And you can mix that notation. So you could include the 3 and not the 5, or the other way around. In this case, we're looking at something like, we've got our 3 and our 5 here, and the 3 is included, so it has a filled in dot, and the 5 is not included, so it's got a open dot. And there you go. Interval notation is just another way of writing exactly the same thing. So we'd have exactly the same number line drawn. Um, so 3, 5 with the open brackets means that we're not including the 3 and the 5. So this is actually exactly the same thing as saying 3 is less than x is less than 5. And when we use the closed bracket, you can think of the, the open bracket as being like an open hand. It's not touching. But with this closed bracket, then it's like a you're grasping onto that number, so it's included. So this is the same as writing 3 less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 5. And mixed notation is also included, so this is like saying 3 is less than or equal to x is less than 5, because I'm including with the square bracket and excluding with the, with the open bracket. Sometimes you'll see things like, um, oops, sorry. Sometimes you'll see things like, um, you know, x is less than 5. Okay, so basically you're saying, okay, I want all the numbers from 5 and downwards, right? And that's easy to write in set notation because you're probably familiar with it. When you write in an interval notation, we're going to say, okay, we're going from negative infinity, that's negative infinity all the way over here, and you always want to do the lower number in both of these first, and then we're going all the way up to 5 with an open bracket there. And these are both open because this one is infinity. You can't touch infinity, it's infinity. And the 5, it happens to be open. If I wanted to do x is less than or equal to 5, then I'd do negative infinity to 5 with a closed bracket like that. All right. 
I'm just going to erase that there. So let's do these two questions. Uh, we'll do the first two questions with interval notation and set notation, and then uh, we'll do the other ones with only absolute value notation. So this first one, let's start with the interval notation. It just goes from negative 3 to 3, and it's got an open circle, so I'm going to use an open bracket, negative 3 to 3. It's really easy to write. Um, so you might start to really love this notation because it's really just very simple to write it in. Uh, with set notation, we have a little bit more work to do. <laughs> x in R, such that negative 3 is less than x is less than 3. And that's our set. With absolute value, I know that I'm going to have the absolute value around the x, and I know that the 3 is involved, and it's going to be positive 3 because it's the absolute value. Uh, and so I think about all the numbers that are in between here, and I know from 0 to 3, these are all less than 3. So I'm going to go less than 3. And you can double check it. You can try like negative the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. So that's less than 3, and that works. And you want to try something that you don't want to include, like let's say negative 4. We don't want to include negative 4. So the absolute value of negative 4 is 4. And hey, that's bigger than 3, so we must have it right. OK, the second one. So again, this is um, really similar, but instead of having one, one set of interval, we've got actually got two intervals here. So when we write our interval, we're actually going to write, uh, and I'm just going to choose a different color here. Um, we're going to write negative infinity to negative 2, and those are open, both open, because this is an open and this is infinity. Union, and we just little, write a little u here, because we're including both of these sets to, to infinity. So you can see that it's two intervals, and when we write it out, we should have two intervals as well. Um, I just want to side note that this is kind of like saying, uh, I want all the numbers in this area and this area. I'm talking about all the numbers from here and over here. Um, this is like saying, okay, this is room 225, that's our room. And all the people in room 223, that's Miss K's room. So I want to include all the people from both of these rooms. The reason I'm talking about it is because when we get to set notation, we're going to write it like this. X is in R, such that X is less than negative 2, or X is greater than 2. Why do we say it like that? Because this is, this is a union, and so you think it should be and, but when you do in set notation, it's or. Well, the reason is because I'm saying, I want someone from one of these rooms. It's going to be, they're going to be in room 225, or they're going to be in room 223. And, you know, because we're humans, you can only be in one of these rooms at the same time. If you can be in both rooms, let me know, because that's pretty awesome. Uh, so we want to be in this room or that room. When we do it in interval notation, we're saying, I want all the guys from both of these rooms, this room and this room, OK? Uh, when we're going to do that in absolute value notation, again, we're going to have the absolute value x, and we're going to involve a 2, because obviously there's 2s in here. And um, I'm going to be going the other way, so I want everything that's greater than 2. So greater than 2. OK. So enough about interval notation and set notation. I'm just going to do the last two with absolute value. Um, so basically, what I want to do is I can see that this is not centered around 0. And that's kind of a problem, because the, the ones we were doing before were centered around 0. And we're using the two numbers. This is 2 and negative 2, so that was easy to find this 2. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the center. So I start at w 1 over here, and I'm moving 1 down, and this moves 1 up. And this moves another and another. And you can see that this is this right here is the center, negative 3. So that means, basically, that I've got 4. I go 4 out, and I moved over. So if I had started at 0, then this would be at 4, and this would be at negative 4, right? So basically, I'm going to do the absolute value of something, and it's going to be less than 4. OK, less than and lot less than equal to, because I have an open circle. Um, and so how do I move from being negative 4, 0, 4 to this negative 7, negative 3, 1? Well, that's like basically we're moving over. So if you remember anything about transformations, when we move anything in the x values over, we're going to actually move to the 
left and we're going to do the counterintuitive. So you think you're adding 3, but you're actually subtracting. Or sorry, subtracting 3 and you're actually adding 3. So the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 4 because I'm moving to the left by 3 and I want to go out four intervals. And you can test this out. So let's try one of these numbers in here, let's say 6, okay? So let's check. I'm going to do negative 6 plus 3, and I'm going to check if that's less than 4. So negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, and that is less than 4, so there you go. It works. So the last question, again, we're just going to do it in the same way. I'm starting with negative 6 and 4. I'm just going to count my way inwards so that, you know, I can find the middle. It's right here at negative 1. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is going to be the absolute value of x plus 1, because I moved to the left 1, and it is greater than 5. And there you go. So the last thing we're going to talk about is just talk about the uh, graph that we had drawn just now, the absolute value function. So what you should know is basically there's one zero, and it's at located at the origin, so the x-intercept is zero, the y-intercept is zero. Uh, we just talked about how it's made out of two lines, and it's symmetrical around the x-axis. This is actually what we call even symmetry, which we'll talk about in 1.3. Um, and then we talk about the end behavior. So as x approaches infinity, as so as we go this way, we want to ask ourselves, does the graph go up or down? And the answer is that, you know, it goes up. It goes to positive infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches positive infinity. So we're going upwards. And when we go into this direction, often the end of the graph, the end behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, y is going up. It goes up to positive infinity. So that is how we write end behaviors. We'll start with x approaches infinity and decide what y does. And then we'll write x approaches negative infinity and then write what y does there as well. The absolute value function has a domain x and r, so there is no limitation on the domain and has a y greater than or equal to zero, so it must be a positive or zero answer. Every input in an absolute value returns an output that is non-negative. So that is all that we're going to talk about with absolute value. We talked about solving. We talked about graphing on the number line and in 2D, in Cartesian plane. And we talked about um, the different types of notation that you might get. Thanks for watching.